those of you who have just joined us, good morning. My name is Andy Hesse, and I am the growing MC for today. And it's fantastic to see everybody here. Good morning from a, a very sunny, if slightly cold, London. Our workshop presenter for this section is a man who has an absolutely outstanding record when it comes to his field. Now, we all use social media. Social media is something that is now absolutely ingrained in our lives. But how many of us are using it correctly? How many times do you look at things like LinkedIn and think, is that profile picture really appropriate? How many times have you seen stuff that's overshared on Facebook or Instagram and you think, why? Why are you doing this? Etiquette is something Sonia mentioned at the end of the, the main opening presentation. And etiquette in social media is absolutely vital, especially when it comes to growing your business or it comes to growing your brand, personal branding. And our speaker this morning is a man who is so in tune with personal branding and with social media that we had to absolutely get him along. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like you to put your hands together and huge, huge round of applause this morning for our speaker, Andrew Solo. It was in 2015. I just applied for my very first job and guess what? They Googled me. When they did search on the social media sites, they were interested in what they found because everything talked about Toastmasters. Now at that point in time, I was a Toastmaster holic. I would go from one meeting to the other and guess what? What would happen is I would check in at every meeting. Typically so, it would be because I would have checked in at one of our biggest banks and then in the afternoon, I'll check in at one of our other biggest motor industry companies, which had a Toastmasters club. And that was how I got my job in less than 10 minutes of an interview. Because apparently, I have contacts. Ladies, gentlemen, business owners, consultants, how are you taking advantage of social media? As we have this conversation this morning, it is intentionally to help you build a business brand through social media. The question though is, why are you on social media? I'd like you to chat, to put it on the chat box. Why are you on social media in the next 60 seconds? As fast as we can type in on the chat box, why are you on social media? Let's hear from you. All right, to connect with others, to gain clients, to get clients. Love that. We still have about 35 more seconds to network, marketing, collaborating, and building your network. Pleased to see you, Yoka. To keep a finger on the pulse. Beautiful, beautiful. Others, why are you still on social media or why are you on social? To start your business soon. I'm excited about that and all the best in this venture. Beautiful, beautiful. Others, why are you to build a network and to build businesses and to be visible, to connect? Love it, love it, love it. To keep connected with my clients. I love all these answers. And yes, it's important for you to be able to understand why you are on social media. Because guess what? Let me give you and be cautious about this. The true reality of this is that it's either social media uses you or you use social media to your advantage. Either social media uses you or you use social media to your advantage. And this is particularly important in this day and age to be aware of. Remember the time when you were searching on Dr. Google for the latest phone, the latest iPhone, and suddenly 
on your Facebook timeline, there's so many ads around iPhones and the different versions of the phones that you're looking out for. And you wondered, is this law of attraction? Yeah. On social media, law of attraction exists and you want to be aware of it. And so we are gathering data through you on social media. And guess what that data is being used for? On Facebook as the marketplace and then on our favorite professional platform, LinkedIn, to build their database. Their database consists of everything that you are posting, sharing, and also updating us on. When Facebook asked us, what's on your mind? They were collecting data, information that they could use. Now, how about you take advantage of this and do the same? In this workshop, I'm hoping that you can share with me on the chat box in terms of what are some of the elements that you would love to learn. But first, tell me about your business brand. In the next 60 seconds, I want you to find a way to just tell me about your business brand. What business brand do you want to build? Let's put it in the chat box in the next 60 seconds. Tell me about your business brand. What is your brand about? Tell me about your business brand. Hmm. I'm not surprised, 30 seconds gone. Oh, wow, Fran, that's quite an experience you had there. Shirley is into counseling. Justin, consultancy. Yoke is from Y Connect and we develop leaders and teams. We trans develop and transform leaders and teams to build a better world, bravery training, helping good girls grow their guilt-free no. Counseling, flourishing now or flourish now. I'm a dog groomer, beautiful. And relates to your values, it, your brand relates to your values. It's about your creativity, about professionalism and trusting a unique and staple gluten-free food, growing individuals, teams, and organizations, and helping people break free from trauma experiencing. So most of us, as you can tell, our brand, our business brand is you. You are the face of your brand. You are the brand ambassador. And so it's imperative that we learn something about branding. And there's only one phrasing that really strikes me when it talks to your brand. Your brand is a promise to your clients, a promise to your clients, a promise of quality, consistency, competency, and reliability. These are the words of Jason Hetman, who started a lot about branding and has since coached, helped, and developed many brands to become successful brands globally. Now, for me, the important element that I want us to be taking there is, number one, we said we are on social media for a reason. It's either social media uses you or you use social media to your advantage. Number two, it's the branding. What are you promising to your clients? Is it quality? Is it consistent? Is it competence or and reliability? And so we're going to go through this workshop similarly by looking at a few concepts Obviously, we can't take it all out in this session, but I hope after this session, you take a few elements around how you can get started or how you can tweak a little bit about your social media presence. Now, as we know, social media is a whole maze on its own. And with that in mind, you want to remember a few elements that you don't have to be, if you have not necessarily started off, you don't have to be on every platform. Know your target and know where they play around and how they in engage. So what do you, why do you need to be intentional on social media? Because now we're talking about your brand and it's a promise. And so you promise the right people. If you promise the wrong people, chances are you might be in trouble. So let's talk about raising awareness. And most of you talked about, you want to raise awareness about your brand and your brand is offering. Remember, it's not about you. It's about what you can do for me. And so you, why, you want to ensure that you raise awareness. And that's why you need intentional social media presence. 
if you're going to be on social media, be active. I don't know how many of you, of you have a Twitter account that you last updated in 2005 or before. I don't know how many of you have a LinkedIn account that has been last updated yonks ago. Social media is using you. Be careful, be cautious. Number two, you want to get buy-in from your audience. Remember, people do not like to be sold to. They want to buy into something. And so you need to be intentional with your social media so that you get that buy-in. People want to engage with you. They want to interact with you. And that essentially also brings us to the third main element. Eventually, with that engagement, you want to translate those likes, comments into clientele. The question is, how? And it's three steps. Consistency, value content creation, and then recognize the industry players. Recognize where you are in. So we're going to do a quick exercise that I'm going to share with you to see an example of how we can put this into practice, essentially. It is imperative that you and I try and by all means to see how we can work this, this out. From my side, I'm going to use Facebook and LinkedIn as typical examples to just illustrate and remind you how if you don't take and use social media to advantage, here's how social media will take advantage of you. And so I'm going to share my screen and then take you through. And if there are any questions, please feel free to raise them. And then I will definitely take them on as we have this conversation. I'm going to come to share my desktop and then here we go. We're going to do this. Mm -hmm. and then we're going to go here. So I'm going to start with LinkedIn. I'm assuming everybody can see my LinkedIn account. This is my LinkedIn. I'm in the training and I'm in the training and development space, and I'm specifically for EQ and related. You can see the people that I've been searching for. When are you, when you are posting on social media, who is your audience? Is it just your friends? Or are they your potential clients? In developing your social media presence and a brand, the first thing that I want you to remember is know your audience. Who is your audience? Now, in my case, as a training and development, uh, as someone who's in training and development, my audience are people in the learning and development space. And so when I am connecting with people, when I want to be associated, I have got a beautiful set of people in learning and development. And who buys my products? It's usually the head of learning and development. Is it the head of learning and development who attends my courses? No, it is actually those that organize those courses for others. And so in your case, you want to also be able to identify who do you need to be connecting with? And I just sent two connections or two requests for connections in the last two days. They're still pending, but we'll get there. But I want you to remember that from your personal perspective. That's one. Number two, when you look into it, again, I want to go back to my profile. In my, on my profile, when I go to my profile, you will notice there's quite a number of elements that are there. Number one, you've got a profile picture that looks to people. I believe it's professional enough. I hope it is and is engaging enough. We always talk about uh, profile pictures and after this session, you will receive a guide. I will be sharing with you a guide to all the attendees about how you can either ensure that your profile picture and many other branding elements suit the social media uh, place platform that you're a part of. In this case, I highlight who I am. Now, this has been very profitable for me when I highlight that I am an EQ trainer and speaker, when people are looking for an EQ, which is emotional intelligence trainer and speaker, they don't go and looking for who is helping 
A, B, C, D, every. What they do is they search for EQ trainer or speaker, and then my name pops up because my headline speaks about it. And I'll give you an example. Let's look for someone who does, um, who is a sales trainer. I'm going to do something quickly. I'm going to look for a sales trainer. And what you're going to find is everyone who's got sales trainer here, if I'm looking for a sales trainer, this is how I find them. And so you want to be able to ensure that you're connecting with the right people, but your profile, your business profile is also in the right space. Lately, our social media LinkedIn experts will tell you, rather write your service offering, all good and well. However, do not forget to profile yourself by certain elements, which are keywords or buzzwords in that space that you are a part of. Secondly, I see your hand raised, Jessica. You may unmute. May I just ask, I see that you put the title first and then um, what you help with. That's yes. what you're suggesting because they search that. Yes, so they will search that, but after they search that, they do want to possibly get a little bit more insight or to be intrigued by whatever you then talk okay. about. So you want to then add that 10 words or less um, offering, service offering that is possibly unique to you and the people around you or the people, the clientele you want. So in my case, what do I do? What is it that I use the EQ training for? There's so many EQ trainers, there's so many sales trainers, but what is it that I do that possibly might stand out? So I would then say I help leaders grow their influence mm -hmm. through emotional mm -hmm. intelligence. So guess what? I've got EQ here. I've got emotional intelligence there. Mm -hmm. I hope that almost please it. So if you search for emotional intelligence, my name should possibly come up. If you search for EQ, my name will also likely come up. So you want to be able to put that across board. Mm -hmm. That's what my primary offering is. And that's what I would love to be known for rather than anything else. So you want to think about it. Yes, I've got a question from people earlier. Shouldn't I be putting my job, uh, the, the, the job title that I have? Again, remember, Nobody really cares who you are. They care about what you can do for them. So you want to position everything you write to your audience. I hope that answers your question, Jessica. Yes, thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Let me just check the chat box. If there are any questions, how do I find HR people who hire trainings? Um, did that answer your question from the last example I shared, Elia? It, it was me. I, I, yes. I was just wondering because you put, you say L and D people search for you, but I feel like HR does a lot of that stuff. So I got confused. So you're in, it can be both. Uh, in many of the spaces that I am in or in the circles, we find a lot of people from learning and development and HR being something else. So you want to be able to build that in. So you want to just connect. So I do also have HR business partners who I connect with. It just depends that day or that week, I might be focusing on L&D. Sometimes you will find me looking for training managers and so forth. So I connect with as many of the people in the space. The key is to be able to look into it. The second thing, just before I forget about, we move out of LinkedIn and I'll look into it. Um, so, what I want you to look able to be able to look into, so is that, sorry, all right. What I want us to be able to look into is the tool called the sales navigator. Now, if you're running a business, this is a, another wonderful tool. I've invested in it just so that I would know which right people to connect with, because sometimes you're connecting with non-decision makers. And so what I do is if I'm looking for, uh, I want to find an account, and then I want to look for companies that I want to be looking for. So I'll be looking for, for example, let's look into the filters. I'm looking for, um, let's say I'm looking for, I'm moving to London. So let's just put London here. And then in the England, and then I'm looking into looking for um, at companies that have, for example, let's say the companies I train for usually have close to um, 200 plus 
people. So this is my, I'm just going to use this as a quick, quick example, not 11 to 50. And then I'm also going to look for a company that is, I'm not, maybe I want them to have an annual revenue of over one, I'm going to come to pounds. We are there, GDT, and then to, let's say four. Right, now, what I've done here, I'm going to, I've just put in the location. There are so many other things that you can add on, but I've put in the location where I'm looking for leads or opportunities, companies that are over 200 people with an annual revenue of over a million. If let's assume in my case, companies with under, under, under a million revenue, they do not necessarily buy into training. So likely they're not going to then work around. So I've got 99 results and then I'm going to search. Now, what happens in this case I'm going to see a couple of companies which I can then go into. And I'm going to show you, for example, with this company, I'm going to look at the red and look at what I see. I will see all the employees, but I'm not interested in the employees. I'm interested in knowing who the decision makers are. So I'm going to save them as my leads. For example, chief information officer. Typically I would then go for the group HR director, because that's a decision maker. And I want a decision maker to be on my uh, timeline or in terms of in my space, and I want to connect with them. So obviously I'm going to bring them in and then I get from there and then I'm able to look into it. Now, what happens is when I get to my home, what will happen is Typically, once it is uh, brought in everything here, I will be able to see all their engagement. But typically, before I even move on, I'm just going to go back a little bit and see I've got, um, I've got 30 results of decision makers in the company. Some of them have changed jobs in the last 90 days. So someone who's changed jobs in the last 90 days, he's looking to possibly make a change. So he's likely to invite someone for training. If you've been there in the company for five, 10, 15 years, you're possibly comfortable with how things are done. And you're also possibly have already your service providers. But I also want people who are active because they might be there. So how they've posted on LinkedIn in the past 30 days. So this is how then I will know who to connect with. So he's been posting on LinkedIn for the past 30 days. Now, if you have ever received a notification that someone viewed you on in their private mode, this is what would have happened. They would have used the sales navigator. And then I would have, oh, okay, all right. I love her about him. Oh, okay, I get to learn about him. In Toastmasters, we learn this, know your audience. So I, all right, I get to know about him. And then when I message him, I already message him with a clear or a potential idea of what it may be. So I hope this is possibly something of interest to learn just from a LinkedIn perspective. I am going to be looking into, um, all right, I see Helen is commenting. I used to work in HR and was focused on L&D, maybe look for HR project managers, employee engagement leads, happiness offices, beautiful. Those are ideas. You are not limited, but just know who your target audience is. When I used to focus mainly on speaking my earlier years, I used to target the marketing crews because they usually would host events and they would need uh, MCs for that for those elements so I used to use to use connect with those um, and then uh, is the sales navigator free on, uh, on LinkedIn no it is not I do think you get one free month if you've not used it before and then you'll be able to work around it and then you'll be able to pay I think it's if I'm not mistaken just over 60 pounds per month uh, to keep your sales navigator on. But like I said, it need not to be that. You can simply do some of these searches on your own and then be able to work around them as you do. The only difference is there's certain detail that you might not be able to get. All right, I'm going to pause here. I'm not so sure how much time I've got left, but I'm going to pause here. Uh, Mr. Zoom Master, five minutes. Beautiful. Um, any questions before we just quickly run through uh, Similarly on Facebook, what you want to remember is the same information that you post. For example, in fact, let me go to Facebook whilst we uh, quickly before we get cut off here. 
I'm going to come to Facebook and I've already set this up. When I'm looking for targeting people, this is how we target people in our case. So I'm going to look for, I'm going to do detailed targeting. I'm going to look for people who are between the ages. So if you're correct birth date and um, birth date and possibly your, uh, your correct age is on Facebook, you're going to receive money if you're within the 31 and 50 range. And then I want to also know, all right, these people, I love my clients are people who just had an adversary within the last 31 to 60 days. Remember when you said you're celebrating your anniversary, Facebook took your details. And then they are newly engaged, they're new couples. I'm into counseling and coaching for new couples. So I will also come here and then look into that. The point is, all I'm trying to say is, this is the information that is available for you to be able to use to build your network and your, your, your community. And as you do that, you'll be able to engage. I hope that was helpful. Are there any questions that I have not addressed? Ah, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, what type of info are you sending to them when you're connecting? In this case, when I'm connecting, I'm in the training and development space that you are also in and I'd love to connect because I do possibly see us potentially be beneficial uh, partners in business or in engagement and there we can engage with that. I'm not shy to tell people what I'm offering and what I can do. And also interested to hear if they've got any queries and concerns. And when I do my consistent posting, I share what training I'm doing, what lessons I'm learning, and if that could be valuable to them. And as I connect with them, usually they will also engage on them. I recently had a post that had people back and forth about leadership training and it's part and parcel of the learning. Jessica, I see your hands up again. What are your, if you're an EQ trainer, do you hashtag human resources or do you, how do you get their attention that way with hashtags? So with hashtags, and it's a beautiful question, I will, in the document that I'll share, the guide that I'll share after this, it will also talk about hashtags. Remember, your hashtag is not about endutsuro da 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 da, because no one cares about endutsuro da 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 da, but we care about what are people looking for. So when you hashtag EQ, because people look for EQ. People really, unless you're in recruitment, people really use HR for my training space. So I wouldn't use HR, rather I would then use um, EQ or the thing, the service, the value offering that I'm offering and then make it come out from there on. I hope this was useful. I see I'm running out of time. I would love us to connect. And so if we can connect, I would be very excited to engage with you and connect and get your feedback. These are my handles and we're going to connect and I'm going to look forward to evaluating your personal brand or your business brand on social media. Give me feedback when you do a post or when you comment, I would love to hear your feedback as Toastmasters always do and post anywhere and everywhere I'll be engaging and I'm looking forward. And if you find useful information in the guide that I'm going to send after this course, please feel free to engage me and let's chat further. I'm always willing to help you grow your personal and business brand. Mr. MC, that concludes my session. Andrew, thank you very much indeed. Firstly, can we have a big round of applause, please, for Andrew? I think that was a fantastic session. One of the things that I'm, I'm kind of collating as I'm going through today is one key thing from each of our workshop sessions. So in the first growing workshop, we had Mohammed. And his key takeaway was that communication is the number one skill. Andrew's, for, for me, the key takeaway was consistency. If you are consistent in your social media, if you are consistent in your message, in your look, in how you come across, then that is how you are going to get people interested. It's the same with brands that constantly change their logos and their formatting and you just think, who the hell are you? <laughs> so I think that was, you know, just such a great primer on how to be really effective in using social media. And one of the really difficult things when it comes to social media is trying to not teach people to suck eggs. We all know how to use social media. That's not the question. That's not the point. The point is how do we use it effectively?
effectively? How do we use it creatively? And most importantly, how do we use it to improve our businesses, to improve our enterprises? So for me, that was absolutely fantastic and you know, worth, worth a conference fee in itself just to kind of pick up those little tips on how to really get good at using social media. And as Andrew says, you know, please feel free to connect to him and I'm sure that will be the start of a fantastic business relationship. So this is how we are now looking here at the D91 conference. We've got a bit of a break. We've got a bit of an entertainment session coming up for you very shortly. Our next appearance on the stage here on the growing stage will be at midday and very nicely following on from what Andrew was talking about, Dennis Lamb is going to be here talking about LinkedIn and how to have effective LinkedIn profiles, how to really optimize LinkedIn. Again, we are not teaching people how to, to suck eggs. We are teaching people how to get the most value out of these sites. And these are your absolute key sites if you want to grow your business and grow your personal development. We've then got a, an old friend of mine, Nico Cavacostis, and Nico is going to be talking about sales with a story. So gone are the days of the hard sell, gone are the days of the really pushing your message until they can't bear it anymore and you know, whatever I'll... not with this nico is going to teach you how to sell it with a story with personality with passion and with subtlety very important then five past one is another old friend of mine tony Fasulu, and tony is going to be talking about elevator pitches and this is a really really key point that a lot of people kind of forget when you ask them who they are what they do i come out with a long-winded five ten minute war and peace about what they do no short sharp elevator pitch and tony will tell you how to do that martina Sivan, um <laughs> simakova i knew i'd get that one wrong is going to talk about limiting beliefs and how to get rid of them at two thirty. And that's going to be really interesting. A lot of us have our limiting beliefs, but how do we get around those and how do we really banish them? We've then got the table topics contest in the main room, so we won't be doing anything in the growing room uh, at three o'clock. But after that, at five to five, our final session is going to be Dave Henson. And Dave's going to be talking about presenting like a guru. He's going to be talking about using PowerPoint. He's going to be using effective slides and how to really get your message across simply but effectively. That's how we are on the stage. I'm going to stay here for a few minutes with Andrew. If you've got any questions, then please feel free to fire them at us and we will um, do our best. If you want to go back into the main lobby, and enjoy the entertainment then absolutely feel free for that and i will see you on the growing stage at around 10 to 12 in preparation for our session with dennis at midday so go off grab a cup of coffee and enjoy yourselves and i'll speak to you in a bit so if anybody has any any more questions then feel free to unmute yourselves and uh, ask away um, Jessica. I'm sorry, but he's just so interesting, Andrew. I, I teach adaptability intelligence, which you know is one of the 12, and nobody Googles AQ intelligence. So would I just call myself like you a EQ trainer and I specialize in that, but I tell them that later? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's actually a, a fantastic point. You want to speak to your audience. What do your audience know? What is it that people, so I wouldn't have known what adaptive uh, intelligence is until someone says, no, it's a component of or something along those lines, and then you enlighten them. Mm. And when you actually engage with your audience, remember you have streamlined your audience, it's no longer just your friends, it's your clientele. And then uh, did you know of something called adaptive intelligence? Then all of a sudden they were like, oh, I didn't know about that. 
All right, okay, that's interesting. And they start relating. Your, your key is to relate to them. Give them a scenario that relates to them and then tell them what it is later on. And I think it positions you as an expert in that space. Mm. I hope that answers your question. Mm. Thank you very much. Yeah, I have a question for you, Andrew. Can you hear me? Yes, I can okay. hear you. Yeah, I was just wondering, I, I sent a question on the chat earlier on. If you're trying to change jobs or you're looking for a new job, uh, do you think there's any benefit in sending emails to like CEOs, CEOs or HR directors of uh, relevant companies? Because sometimes uh, this C when you send these emails, emails, uh, the CEOs might just ignore you or they may see, they may just um, think this is something that has to come through the normal uh, application process and not something that you need to contact them directly with what do you think about that my recommendation and that's a beautiful question my recommendation is first of all does the ceo get involved in the hiring of people when you look into it chances are in great big companies ceos don't get involved in that however your hr or your recruitment officers are the ones that are getting get involved in this process so you might have better chances by reaching out to these people and possibly if not say I'm looking for a job is, are there any opportunities? And if they are, how can I get a hold or how can I be considered for some of these opportunities? This is what I offer and so forth. Unless you're looking into a specific department and this, I recommend one of my colleagues, they were in, this, in, the, in the marketing space and they wanted to move from one company to the other. And the only thing they did was position themselves to the marketing director of that new company that he wanted to get into. And then they position themselves as a value add to his team. And so he was then able to help him transition into becoming part of that organization that he, he wanted to be a part of. So you want to be almost smart in how you approach it, HR, or if you want to be a certain part of a certain team, connect with the person you want to be in that same team with, and then reach out and find out if there are any opportunities and if you could be considered. That would be my recommendation. I hope it helps. Right, that, that's a very but, good answer. Thank you very much. You're quite right, because the CEO most, most of the time is not involved in decision making. So it's either the HR uh, talents acquisition manager or the head of that particular department that you want to join. That's right. That's yeah, right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hello, hello, Andrew. Hello. Can I ask a question? I, I think you you promised a handout or something at the end of this. How do yes. we acquire it? How do we get hold of it? So all the delegates who were part of the session will receive the handout as part of the conference package with uh, the right. organizer, event organizer. Lovely. Thank you very much. I've enjoyed right. your conversation, by the way. <laughs> I appreciate your feedback. Thank you so much for being a part of it. Wonderful. Have we got any more questions before we wrap up? No, it's gone quite. Andrew, thank you very much indeed. Absolute privilege to have you along. And I, you know, I think as you just heard from the from the feedback there, so much has been absorbed and people have taken so much away from this. So really, really appreciate your time on this today and really appreciate everybody in the audience turning up thank you very much we will be back on the grand stage in 30 minutes time so from andrew and myself thank you very much and we'll see you later <laughs>